Winter League Baseball is underway. Most Winter Leagues can be found in Latin America, and those leagues are very exciting to watch. But if you're looking for an English language alternative to that, your best choice this offseason is definitely the Australian Baseball League. Despite baseball not being a top sport there, Australia has made quite a name for itself in the baseball world. They always do well in international competitions, including a top six finish in this month's Premier 12. There's always one or two major leaguers from down under, and their professional league, the ABL, is the highest level of pro baseball in the Southern Hemisphere. And it's not just Australians in the ABL. It's become a popular destination for MLB, NPB, and KBO prospects from all over the world. In fact, one team is entirely made up of Korean players, and not all the teams are in Australia. There's now one in New Zealand. This league was founded in 2010, so this will be its 10th season. There was previously another league of the same name, and several of the team names have carried over. The 2019-20 season will begin on Thursday, November 21st and run until February 9th, each team playing 40 games. The league is split into two four-team divisions, the Northeast and the Southwest. The two division champs are given the one and two seeds in the postseason, and three more teams qualify. Number 5 meets number 4 in a one-game playoff. The winner of that meets the number 1 seed, and 2 meets 3, in a best-of-three series, winners moving on to the ABLCS, also a best-of-three. The winning team is awarded the Claxton Shield, given annually to Australia's best baseball team since 1934. Awards are given out at the end of the year. The Helms Award is the name of their MVP award. There's also the Pitcher of the Year, Reliever of the Year, Rookie of the Year, and Gold Gloves, just like in most other leagues around the world. The first team we'll look at is the Brisbane Bandits. They have won the ABL title four years in a row and will be trying to win their fifth this year. Their top pitcher is Tim Atherton. Last year he was 7-0, ERA at 287, and he was named ABLCS MVP for the second year in a row. Canadian infielder TJ Bennett led the league with 13 home runs and slashed 303, 364, 626. Brisbane was tied with the Blue Sox for first in the Northeast Division and for the best record in the league. The team is managed by former Milwaukee Brewers all-star catcher Dave Nilsson, who is Team Australia's manager for the Premier 12. They play their home games at Holloway Field in Newmarket, a Brisbane suburb. They won the championship series two games to nothing over the Perth Heat, and that's who we'll talk about next. The Heat are tied with Brisbane for the most ABL titles, with four, and have the most Claxton Shields, with 15. Last year, they finished atop the Southwest Division and claimed the number two seed in the postseason. This team has a good relationship with the Tampa Bay Rays. In the 2019-2020 season, Perth's roster will feature six Rays prospects. The best of those are outfielder Nico Holzheiser and infielder Kaleo Johnson. Tim Canelli last year slashed 338, 419, 531 on his way to winning the Helms Award for the second time in his career. Infielder and Pirates prospect Robbie Glendinning was named Rookie of the Year after posting a 1.013 OPS. The Heat play home games at Perth Harley-Davidson Ballpark, often referred to by its simple original name, Baseball Park. To reach the championship series, Perth beat the Sydney Blue Sox two games to one. The Blue Sox, being the only team located in Australia's most populous state of New South Wales, have a good-sized fan base, but success has not followed that strong support. They have yet to win a championship. Shortstop Gift Ngope, the first player from the African continent to play at the major league level, was a member of the Blue Sox last year, hitting 379 and winning a gold glove. Closer Todd Van Steensel took home the Reliever of the Year award after recording 10 saves. The Blue Sox play at Blacktown International Sports Park, a host venue for baseball at the 2000 Sydney Olympics, and it was the site of the first ever ABL game on November 6, 2010, when Sydney beat the Canberra Calvary. Speaking of the Calvary, they were the other team to reach the semifinals, where they were beaten two games to one by Brisbane. The Cavalry have one ABL championship from the 2012 to 13 season. They are the only team other than Perth and Brisbane to win the ABL championship. Canberra's top pitcher is lefty Steve Kent, who compiled a 7-1 record last season with a 2.90 ERA. Relief pitcher J.J. Hoover, who previously played for the Reds, D-backs, and Brewers, will join the Cavalry this season. Their home ballpark is Narabunda Ballpark, commonly referred to as the Fort. The Cavalry reached the semifinals by winning a one-game wildcard over the Melbourne Aces. The Aces finished just one game out of first in the Southwest Division. 24-year-old Kansas City Royals prospect DJ Burt led the league with 18 stolen bases last season. Alan de San Miguel is one of the league's best catchers. Second baseman Luke Hughes is another good one. Slash line 309, 407, 602 last year, with 10 home runs. Melbourne Ballpark is where they call home. It's the only ballpark in ABL that uses AstroTurf. And now for the three teams that missed out on the postseason last year. First up is the Adelaide Giants. This will be their first year under that name. Up until now, they were known as the Adelaide Bite. 
The Giants, together with the five teams I previously mentioned, are the six original teams of the ABL. Adelaide reached the ABL Championship Series in both 2015 and 2016, but lost both times. 23-year-old Twins prospect, center fielder Aaron Whitefield is one to watch. Last year he had a 739 OPS and led the team in steals with 9. German Marcus Solbach, a Dodgers right-hand pitching prospect, was 5-3, 1.10 ERA, and 0.807 whip. He and the Heat's Tim Kennelly were named joint MVP for the ABL season. Solbach became the first player, not from Australia or the U.S., to win this honor. Diamond Sports Stadium, or Bennett Field at Adelaide Shores, is where they play. Last season, two expansion teams were added to the ABL. The Auckland Tuatara became the first team located outside of Australia. In case you're wondering, this is a Tuatara, a reptile only found in New Zealand. Infielder and local favorite Daniel Lamb Hunt is from Auckland and was the first New Zealander to play in the ABL. Former Major League pitcher Josh Colmenter was Auckland's top starting pitcher, going 3 and 4 with a 3.25 ERA. 20-year-old catcher Johnny Holmza, a Padres prospect, will join the team this year. They'll be playing at a new venue this year, QBE Stadium, more commonly known as North Harbor Stadium. At the bottom of the standings last year was Geelong, Korea. This is the team that is made up entirely of Korean players, though it is located in the state of Victoria in Australia. Their inaugural season didn't go well, with just 7 wins and 33 losses. Jin Yong Jung led Geelong pitching with a record of 3-5 and, and an ERA at 415. He returns to the team's pitching staff this year. And Geelong Baseball Park is the home ground for this team. And those are the eight teams of the Australian Baseball League. The ABL has come a long way since it began 10 years ago. It's expanded from six teams to eight teams, with possibility for more future expansion. In its first year, there was no TV coverage, not even in Australia. Now the league can be watched on TV in several countries, and watched online from anywhere in the world. For anyone interested in following this league, I'll include a link to the ABL channel where games are live-streamed. And that's all for today. If I've left anything out, let me know in the comments. If you're new here, subscribe for more videos about baseball from around the world. Until next time, this is Baseball International. See ya!